Duke, UNC, it's finally here. Hey ACC fans, Kelly Nash alongside Scott Fowler, sports columnist for the Charlotte Observer and Raleigh News and Observer. His call on this week focusing on the Battle of the Blues. Now Scott, there are special moments in rivalries on each side that fans just can't forget. What are some of those in this one? There's so many, Kelly, because they've played 230 times, but I'll give you a couple and they both involve blood. Uh, one of them was back in 1992 when Eric Montross literally was bleeding from the head in a couple of places in a great UNC Duke game, a year that Duke ultimately won the national championship, but as Tar Heel fans remember, Montross was instrumental in that victory. There was more bloodshed in 2007 when Gerald Henderson fouled Tyler Hansbro hard at the end of a UNC Duke game, and that became what was called as Nosegate. People still remember it five years later in varying uh, ways, depending on which side of the rivalry you're on. The last thing I really remember, Kelly, was back in 1995, Duke for that year was not very good. Mike Krzyzewski was out with a back injury, but Jeff Capel hit an amazing shot, maybe the best shot uh, of this rivalry to send it into a second overtime, a game where people, it shouldn't have been close, but it was because the way these two teams play, you can pretty much throw out the records. They are always going to be close games. Absolutely, no shortage of blood, sweat, or tears with this pair. Now, there are rivalries around the world. How does this one match up? Honestly, I think this is the best rivalry out there, not only in college sports, but I think in the entire sports world. And I'll give you two reasons why. I think one is really geography. These two teams are so close to each other, they are bumping into each other all the time. The players get their hair cut at the same barbershop in many cases. Dean Smith and Mike Krzyzewski both sent their daughters to the same piano teacher. The the campuses are only eight miles away as, a, as the crow flies, so it's a very close rivalry, literally. The other part of it is they're so darn good. These two teams, one or the other or both, have been ranked every single time they've played for almost the last 60 years. They win national championships, it seems like, every other year. So it's a rivalry that always has a big national impact as, a, as well as a big regional impact. Absolutely, and you know this pair, as you said earlier, faced off 230 times. Everyone's got their favorite game. Where can this rivalry go next? There's only one place that I think, honestly, it needs to go, and I'd love to see this. It has never happened. I'd love to see them meet in the NCAA Final Four, preferably in the national championship game. They have never played in the NCAA tournament, Kelly. After 230-some-odd meetings, that's odd that they've never been there. They played once in the NIT 40 years ago. Other than that, it's been strictly in the regular season or the ACC tournament. I'd love to see them play in the national championship. I think that would be the ultimate UNC Duke game. Now, just last week, the ACC announcing the additions as far as scheduling for Syracuse and Pitt. How will that schedule hurt this rivalry? Well, I don't think it'll really mess it up at all. They'll still play twice uh, every year. They're never, the ACC is way too smart not to have their marquee game go on twice every year. Now, it will bring, especially Syracuse, into the fold an incredibly good uh, basketball team as well. Jim Bayheim in this conference, he's going to win some tournaments, he's going to win some games, so maybe they're not always playing for first and second place anymore. Maybe sometimes they're playing for second or third place if Bayheim's team is as good as it is this year, but this rivalry will always stand the test of time, no matter if there's 50 teams in the ACC or if there's seven like there used to be. These two, that is the marquee game every single year. I have a feeling this year's matchups are not going to disappoint. You can catch the action Wednesday night at 9 Eastern on ESPN. Kelly Nash, Scott Fowler, thanks for joining us. <laughs>